All right. Uh, good evening, everybody. That is a little bit too quiet. Um, I saw Michael's workshop asking if uh, everybody's wearing pants because it's hot. Uh, I'm wearing shorts, so I'm wearing uh, I'm wearing bottoms. But yeah, it's hot here too. I'm in uh, Northern California, and um, it was like 103 today or something like that. So uh, pretty ridiculous. Um, wow, Caligula loves my channel more than anything else on the tube. Thanks, man. Uh, could you please possibly make another video on the PS1? Uh, if you're just talking about making a video about the uh, PlayStation, the original PlayStation, I'm actually working on a video on that um, right now. So uh, keep an eye out for that, although it's um, it's going to be a ways away, though. So, um, so yeah. Uh, okay, so... Um, Hey, Smoke Monster, what's up, man? Uh, all right, so, you know, I think I've already talked about this, uh, so I'm not going to belabor the point, um, and I already kind of explained it in the uh, the video description, but, you know, I, I guess I kind of feel like we've gotten in the habit of doing live streams with these mini systems, and so when the TurboGrafx-16 Mini got announced, I pre-ordered it, but, um, you know, it... Uh, because of, you know, I said global events, I think. But, you know, just because of the pandemic and the whole thing with the um, um, the system not shipping out when it was supposed to, but it's still being available in Japan, people were importing it. It just kind of took away, I thought, uh, the coolness of doing like a release day live stream. But um, people seemed like they were still interested in me doing it. And uh, and frankly, you know, I, I plugged it in and played with it and I'm pretty impressed with it. So... Um, so I figure let's check it out. So, uh, oh, and so the other thing we're going to check out though with it, and uh, you know, I just say this, I feel like you're supposed to say this. Uh, I paid for all this stuff. This is not, none of this was freebies and this is not a sponsored stream, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So we're not, if, I've already got it unboxed. We're not doing an unboxing video. I'm just showing you, uh, there's the box. Uh, you know, it looks similar to the original Turbo Graphics box, I guess. It doesn't have that kit on it though making the stupid face. And then on the back, it just has uh, screenshots of all the games. Um, it does come with only one controller. And I only say that because I think I, somebody somewhere uh, said that they thought it came with two controllers. It does not. Uh, you just get one. Uh, I'm going to show you uh, the controller here. Well, I'll show you the system. There's not much to show. I mean, it looks like a TurboGrafx-16. For a mini system, it's pretty big. I would guess this is probably about 75% the size of an original turbo graphics i um i don't have one anymore uh to show you i only have pc engines but uh for a mini system it's a pretty good size mini system uh it does have a hue card slot but it doesn't do anything uh you get two controller ports which is really cool i only say that because of course the original turbo graphics 16 uh had one controller port and uh it still has the the back cover that you could have taken off back in the day and put a turbo booster on so it still has that and then back here you've got uh, HDMI input and then for some reason the micro USB input to power it is like inside this thing so that you have to have the power cable come out right here and uh, I really hate that that's a very minor complaint but um, it's hard to get it plugged in so uh, whatever and then once you've done that uh, you can route the cables out of the cover and put it back on so uh, so that's pretty cool. And um, the controller that came with the system looks just like uh, an original turbo pad. Uh, if you caught the live stream that I did uh, with Corey, uh, that came with like an original, original PC engine pad. So it didn't have uh, turbo, but this does have turbo. Uh, sorry, everything's backwards because it's on camera there. Uh, this does have the normal turbo switches that would have been on an original turbo pad. Uh, the pad feels really nice. It feels very similar uh, to an original turbo pad. The The cable is very thin. Um, I don't I don't feel like that really matters, but it's just the uh, the original turbo pad had really, really thick like uh, like fire hose cables. And um, and this one's the exact opposite. So uh, it doesn't really matter. And it's got a really long cable, but um, it feels like a nice controller. The select and run buttons feel like you have to push them in way too far, but, I mean, who really cares? Uh, and then the other thing we're also going to check out, I said we'd check out two things, is I also bought the wireless pad from 
uh, sorry, that's like blown out uh, on camera from 8-bit do or do or whoever. Um, yeah, so this is a this is a wireless 2.4 gigahertz pad, so it comes with a little receiver. And uh, I'll show that more later. But um, I bought that too, although to be very honest, I bought that primarily uh, for use with the Mister, uh, for which it works very well. But we'll talk about that controller uh, a little bit later. Uh, I see that I already got three super chats, so uh, thank you very much uh, to Daryl, to I love the library. Uh, if that's true, that's awesome. I love the library too. And uh, Pete Rabatinsky, I'll get that right, uh, gave us uh, 777. So uh, thanks a lot, man. Uh, okay, so now I just have to plug this thing in real fast. Because uh, I, I had it unplugged so that I could show it to you guys. And so you'll see why I hate this micro USB connection because it's hard to get it plugged in. Okay, that wasn't so bad. Um, somebody in the Discord the other day was having a problem. Was it in Discord or on Twitter? I don't know. Uh, was having a problem with their TurboGrafx Mini. Um, they had to try like three different power supplies in order to get it to work, which, uh, I don't like the sound of that. That's not right. Um, it doesn't come, that's an important point, I guess. It doesn't come with a power supply. Uh, you get the USB cable, but you have to supply the USB, uh, power supply. And, uh, yeah, it was math guy there. And, um, I just have it plugged into the USB 3.0 port on my computer and it works fine. But, uh, math guy there had to, uh, try like, he tried an iPad power brick and that didn't work. Uh, and then he tried a Nintendo power brick. I think, I don't know, math guy, you can tell people what you tried there, but he finally found one that worked. But I thought that that sounded kind of bizarre that he was having such a hard time. Uh, Konami of course sells an official power supply that they want you to buy, but uh, I'm not going to do that. Uh, Jamie or Jaime Ochoa, we got a, uh, uh, super chat from, thank you very much, man, uh, or lady, man, man. Uh, okay. So, uh, and sorry for the, I know I've got a four, three picture and a 16, nine screen, but, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. I got problems with my webcam. Uh, let's just be thankful, uh, that it works. Uh, so I'm going to switch the view over and then it, it, this, this console seems like it takes a minute to boot up. Which, um, I mean, I don't mean literally a minute, but I, it seems like it's why when, when his wasn't working right away, I was like, well, are you waiting long enough? Because you can see how long it's taking. Uh, and then there we go. That might be a little bit too loud. All right. Um, what's going on? Someone says chat's broken. I hope not. Um... I uh, can't help you there. All right, so um, we, we we looked at this when uh, I did the stream with Corey, I guess. You can switch the, the view here, uh, and then you get access to different games. Uh, in this case, you can switch between uh, the TurboGrafx-16 here and uh, PC Engine. So if you go down here uh, to select console... Uh, and we'll look at this more later, but I'm just kind of showing you. You can switch over, and now you get core graphics. So, uh, so there you go. Um, uh, I don't remember. Did the, did the PC Engine Mini let you? It let you switch between that and something. But the PC Engine Mini has one game that, uh, or, or two games, I think, that the core graphics and Turbo Graphics 16 don't have. Because I think internally these are the same console, the core graphics and this one. Here you get Salamander, which for me is important. Uh, that's uh, Life Force. Uh, the, the PC Engine Mini has like two games. I mean, it's a dating simulator and like an RPG, but they're Japanese. So like, I don't want to play either one of those things. So, um, so personally, I wouldn't recommend getting the PC Engine Mini because I would want to have Salamander. Um, this still seems loud. Uh, so, you know, I don't really want to uh, spend too much time trying to, like, you know, critique the system or criticize it. Uh, I'll just say that so far I really like it. I think the emulation seems great. Uh, I'm sure there's input lag because that's unavoidable. But whatever it is, it's small enough that, you know, I don't I don't notice it. I mean, I'm a pretty casual gamer, I guess. So it would have to be pretty bad before it would be bad for me. But, um, but yeah, I mean, the main thing people are going to complain about 
is the game uh, lineup because there's always going to be games in there that you know people think, well, why is this game there? And and I'm upset that that game is not there. And uh, you know I've said this before, but um, uh, the lineup is never going to please uh, everybody. And uh, I see people in the chat are talking about uh, uh, Bithead 1000. He he uploaded a video yesterday sort of showcasing the three games that he thinks are missing. It goes into this teaser mode. I didn't start China Warrior. I just decided it's going to do that now. Um, you know, and, and he mentioned uh, three games that he thought uh, needed to be there, and I agree. And the only one that I would add to that is uh, Gate of Thunder, which I'm kind of surprised uh, isn't there. So uh, we'll just go through the games uh, just real fast here, and then we'll pick a few uh, to play. Uh, they're in alphabetical order, although you can change that. Uh, so we got Alien Crush, Blazing Lasers, Dungeon Explorer. I'll also mention, if you watched that Next 10 video I did about the TurboGrafx-16 here on this channel, uh, it's nice to see that uh, several of the games that were on my list uh, ended up on this console. Uh, Moto Rotor, which uh, I don't like that game that much. Uh, Power Golf, which is not really that great of a golf game in my opinion. They didn't need to put that one on there. Uh, R-Type, Victory Run, Chu Man Fu, JJ and Jeff, Military Madness, Newtopia, Ninja Spirit, Psychosis, Space Harrier, Splatterhouse, Ease Book 1 and 2, Bonk's Revenge, Kadash, Parasol Stars. I don't know, are they in alphabetical order then? Things are kind of getting weird. Air Zonk, Newtopia 2. That's impressive. New Adventure Island, Where's the Cover Art? That's strange. Soldier Blade, Bomberman 93, Lords of Thunder, and then that's it. So I guess they're not in alphabetical order. I don't really understand uh, what, uh, what order they're in. And then if you switch over to PC Engine, there's other games over there, but we can kind of check those out later. Um, I don't really want to get uh, bogged down looking at settings and whatnot, um, but I'll just show you guys real quick. Uh, the two things in here that you might want to mess with, uh, you have display settings. Uh, it defaults to this first setting, and if you get one of these systems, uh, I recommend that uh, you just leave it there. Uh, that is uh, looks to be integer scaled, so uh, that's going to give you the best quality picture in my opinion although then you're going to have borders around all sides. You can also fill the screen vertically, uh, which is the second option uh, here. And then uh, this is like a, I think that's like an eight by seven uh, picture instead of four by three. Uh, then you can stretch it out. Please don't do that. And then the last option here is that you can have it uh, with this Turbo Express uh, uh, bezel, if you will. Uh, I don't want to mess with that either. So I'm going to leave it here on the default setting, which I like. And the only other thing here that I think you might want to check out is wallpaper. Um, I don't really know what that's supposed to be. Uh, I kind of like that one. I, it's pretty generic, but I thought it looked kind of cool. Uh, this is supposed to look like a TV with speakers hanging off of it, so maybe like an old PVM 2530 or something. Or you can basically have nothing, which is also fine. But I kind of thought that looked cool, so that's the one that I'm rolling with. And uh, that's pretty much it uh, as far as the settings go. Uh, as far as I'm concerned. So uh, now we're just going to check out uh, a few games and I'm going to load up the game and then I'm going to check out uh, the chat real fast. Uh, I don't know, you guys, we, I feel like there's a lot of things on here that I've already played uh, extensively on a live stream, so I'm trying to play something else. So we'll check out some Alien Crush real fast. Uh, I'm going to scroll way up here. Uh, I don't know where I even left off. Oh, thanks for the uh, super chat. Uh, Brian, appreciate it. Uh, Brian just sold me a bunch of laser discs, by the way, so I'm very much looking forward to uh, that stuff getting here. Oh, yeah, and we'll talk about uh, the games that I was saying. Uh, well, that Bithead said and that I also said I thought uh, were missing. Um, I don't know, people are having a problem with the chat. I, I really can't... Uh, I really can't do anything about that. Ryan Reinbold is still upset about new math. Uh, how would you play five-player Dungeon Explorer? Are they going to release a multi-tap? Yeah, I believe they did release a multi-tap, but I think you might have to import it from Japan. But uh, I'm pretty sure that they um, did a multi-tap. I've still never played five-player, well, anything. So uh, uh, I would like to check that out. Uh, yeah, Ninja Spirit. I played a little bit of Ninja Spirit uh, today, actually. Smoke Monster says uh, New Adventure Island's cover artist won't let them use it. Uh, that seems kind of bizarre, but uh, if that's the way it is, then that's the way it is. 
Um, oh, I guess they were trying to juice him for a bunch of money. Well, that, that makes sense. Uh, Jose wants to know how long are the controller. I don't know how long the controller cards are exactly, but, um, well, I can't. Well, I can show you. I can just unplug it. So I've got it about three feet long here, and you can see how much of it I've got coiled up. So if I had to guess, I'd say it's probably a 10-foot cord. Uh, I'm not totally sure uh, about that. Um, sorry, I can't. I just I saw two other things fly by, and I don't know where they are now. But one person asked when the next flashback is. Uh, I don't know. I wish I could have the house to myself for like 20 minutes. But, uh, you know, I've taken all these notes in the next three flashbacks, and I just haven't done um, I haven't sat down and made one yet. Uh, and then the other question was, when's the next magazine read-through going to be? And uh, interestingly, I just won uh, an auction today on eBay for a magazine that I'm going to do a read-through with. So, And that was something that Corey and I were going to do together. So, uh, so yeah. Uh, now people are talking about laser discs. Um, who's in your house? My wife's in my house. Um, uh... What was I saying? I don't even know anymore. Was it about the magazine read-through? I forgot. This seems like actually a good game to test uh, input lag with. Maybe better than a shooter. We're not going to play this one for that long. But um, Didn't we play Devil's Crush on a live stream one time? But, uh, I mean, you can see there, you know, the, the, in my opinion, the picture looks uh, really good. But, uh, again, this is integer scaled, so it, it, that's going to give you the sharpest picture. I should mention, uh, I think this is pretty standard at this point with these mini consoles, but it outputs uh, 720p. So if it, if it was outputting 1080p and you were doing uh, integer scaling, then, um, well, I guess you could do a 4x scale because this is, uh, I think, 224 lines. I'm not positive, but Smoke Monster's still here. I'm sure he knows all about it. Uh, there you go. I'm not doing well anyway. Um, was Devil's Crush on here? Now I forgot. We just went through all the games, but uh, I thought you only got one. Uh, Devil, I mean, people consider Devil's Crush to be the better game, and I mean, it is, but wow, we're doing real bad. Um, but Alien Crush was a launch game, so it kind of, uh, you know, for me, it's cool just for that reason. All right, that's it. We're already done. Well, that's good, because I want to try to bust through some other games. So, uh, okay. Uh, no, it's not, Derek says. So, cool. Okay, so now you hit uh, Run and Select at the same time, and you get this in-game menu. And here you can load, uh, or you can save states and then load states, um, if you're into that sort of thing. Or you can hit Return to Menu and then uh, pick a new game. Uh, is Candy Crush on there? It is not. I know you're joking. Um, oh, so the three games that uh, Bithead was talking about, is we played Blazing Lasers for like an hour one time on the show. I won't do that again. I'll show you guys Moto Rotor. That's kind of an uncommon game. Uh, I'm not good at it at all, but we'll check it out real fast. Um, yeah, so so Bithead... Well, didn't I cover Moto Rotor on my show now that I'm looking at it? We'll still play it. Uh, the three games that Bithead talked about were uh, uh, Keith Courage, which, like, you know, Keith Courage is not a good game, you know, if you play it now, but the thing is, it was the pack-in game. And so, uh, so if you were somebody who had a TurboGrafx-16 back in the day, like, that was the game that everybody had. And so to not include it seems pretty crappy, but you have to remember that Keith Courage was based on, like, an anime series or... Was it anime or manga? I don't even know which. Um, in Japan, so if if Konami wanted to include that with the mini, they were going to have to pay uh, uh, licensing fees, which which they're not going to do. Um, and I'm sure that's like the same problem with uh, New Adventure Island. You know, I mean, how many games are there on here? I don't even remember, but it's a lot. And so Konami can't afford to say to somebody, oh, yeah, we'll pay you 50 cents per unit for your game because that's going to eat into their profit margin. So... Um, you know, I guarantee you that's what happened with uh, with Keith Courage. And, I mean, it's no great loss that it's not there because the game 
at least in my opinion, kind of sucks anyway. Uh, um, I forgot how to play this. Oh, I, I got it, I got it, I got it. So, like, it takes forever for your, your car to get up to speed. I should have bought... Well, did I even have any money? I should have bought some upgrades, but... Um, turn, dude. Oh, yeah, this has a real wacky control scheme. Um, all right, I'm done with this. This game blows. Uh, pardon my French. Um, uh, the other games, Bloody Wolf was another one that I kind of feel like, yeah, that, I mean, that game really should have been on there uh, for sure. And uh, the other game we talked about was Legendary Axe. And I really have no idea why um, why Legendary Axe wasn't on there. Uh, we're going to skip Power Golf. I hope you guys are okay with that. Uh, I want to show you our type. Um, we played our type during the live stream uh, that Corey and I did with the PC Engine Mini. And, you know, Corey, of course, being Corey, uh, you know, being sort of the RGB master, was, uh, you know, he's more in tune to, you know, seeing things like shimmering and whatnot. And he was pointing out that, you know, uh, I think he originally said that, like, oh, maybe this isn't integer scaled because they're still shimmering. But uh, our type runs at a really strange resolution. So whereas the rest of the games might look perfect when they're integer scaled, uh, with this game you can see some shimmering. And uh, in the first level it's not a big deal at all, but um, when you get to the second level uh, that has sort of that crazy background, um, it's very evident. So uh, that doesn't mean that this is not, uh, not still an awesome game to play, but it's just sort of a caveat that... Um, you know, the graphics end up kind of looking weird. But, uh, you know, I'm glad to see this was included on the system, uh, just because, at least in my opinion, uh, it's really one of the best games on the TurboGrafx-16. It, it's a really amazing home port. Come back here. That's not where I want you, man. Things got a little hairy because my little guy got behind me. Uh, thank you very much, Daryl. Oh, crap. It's funny because I can always beat this first level on one guy, like in my sleep, uh, until I'm streaming. But we'll be all right, I think. Hopefully. We're gonna have to change up the strategy a little bit, though. Well, wow, greetings from Dallas, Texas. Well, welcome, welcome. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Oh, well, you can kind of see now more in the background. All right, let's, well, sorry, I got to play again because I'm, that's terrible. Uh, but when you get to this point in the game, actually, you can really see more in the background where there's sort of that um, shimmering going on. Come on, man. I don't want to continue. Well, what's the difference? Unless, is it going to start me off at the same spot? Yeah, I don't want that. Sorry, I'm going to reload the game. Although, you know, this is actually a game where this would be a good point to talk about the 8-bit uh, the Do controller, actually. So um, I'm going to switch controllers real fast, which only takes a second, and I'll show you why. I'm going to die here. It doesn't matter. Um, so, well, I guess I still need this then. So I wanted to show you that this 8-bit Do or Do or whoever uh, controller is. Here it is. Uh, it looks so I got the PC engine uh, looking one, but you can see if I line them up It's ever so slightly so I have them lined up over on this side behind my hand You can see it's about a finger width narrower, which doesn't seem like a big deal But you can actually feel the difference, but 
it's not that big of a deal, but um, I mean, it doesn't bother me. Uh, the D-pad feels real nice, but the main difference is that it doesn't have turbo switches. It has turbo buttons. So you just press uh, the button up here if you want turbo button to, or down here if you want normal button to, which is kind of cool, but kind of not. It depends on what game you're playing. Uh, Joe Redifer pointed out to me on uh, Twitter that you couldn't play, was it Gunboat or something? Uh, some game I'd never played. Uh, you can't play it with this controller because you need to be able to select uh, the different turbo speeds. But um, for our type, it's actually really cool because then you can just hit the turbo button for a normal shot and then hold down uh, the shot button if you want that uh, charged shot. So, um, so yeah. Uh, someone wants to know if I'm going to test the hidden games. Uh, if there's hidden games... What is it? It's like the rearranged version of like Fantasy Zone and stuff. I don't actually know how to uh, load those up. So uh, if somebody knows, if you want to post it in the chat, uh, then we could definitely uh, we can definitely check that out because I haven't seen them yet uh, either. See now I'm using the turbo button. But uh, you know the D-pad looks very very similar. Uh, to the D-pad on the official controller and um, and feels very similar, although I, I would say I think maybe it feels a little bit better. select then hit run in the game oh can you play arcade r type i want to check that out can someone look it up though first because i don't want to i don't want to restart the game for no reason Check that out then. Hold selector saying. Yeah. Alright, didn't say anything different there. It looks the same uh, to me. Um, yeah, I don't I don't feel like that did anything. Holding down select and hitting run. Yeah, I don't know why anybody's talking about Hawaiian pizza there, but yeah, Hawaiian pizza is... If there was an official CGQ pizza, that would be it. As I've said many times, it's sweet, salty, and fatty. Alright. So we're not screwing around anymore. I guess we are screwing around still. Alright. It's funny because I just I posted a video on a different channel just doing a capture test of the first level of this game and I sat down and just you know, like I said, plowed through the first level no problem. It's just hard because I'm trying to keep an eye on the chat, I guess out of the corner of my eye. I just feel like pe people who don't like Hawaiian pizza are just almost being, like, intentionally closed-minded. Like, what what is there not to like? Alright, don't come back here. Alright. 
Alright, screw this. I tried. I don't know what's wrong with me tonight. It is like 100 degrees down here. Are you asking me or telling me that you can um, adjust the turbo speed? All right. Um, I mean, I doubt anybody wants to see a victory run. Ninja Spirit. We've played Ninja Spirit before. Uh, I'm kind of curious to see what uh, Space Harrier. Uh, I know I've played it before uh, on the Turbo Graphics, but I don't really remember what it looks like. I always felt like Space Harrier is maybe a little bit overrated. I could see this game being, you know, if you play like the original Super Scalar arcade board in the arcade, I could see this game being cool, but. Um, I don't know, just, you know, to me, it's like you want to talk about weekend rental, you know, even like Space Harrier 2 on the Genesis, you know, which was pretty cool as a launch game. You know, at one point I was kind of under the uh, opinion that maybe that should have been the pack-in game because it would have been a cool tech demo uh, for the Genesis. But overall, this game is just sort of like, it's okay. Pineapple, ham, cubes, and bacon bits. I could definitely get on board with that. Uh, thank you for the super chat there. No, you don't. I mean, bacon makes everything better, so... I mean, it is kind of interesting that uh, a Sega game... Ah, a Sega game made it on to the, the mini system here. But, uh, you know, I don't suppose that Sega is probably ever going to come out with a Master System mini. Although, to be honest, I bet that would sell really well in, uh, in like, the UK. And uh, it would sell well in Brazil, but, um, you know, I don't know how much the import tax would be for something like that. Now, it might make it not worth buying, I'm saying. Um... But maybe that's why they don't care about having the original Space Harrier be, uh, be on the system. Uh, and Fantasy Zone, for that matter. Oh, right. So we were talking about uh, missing games. And I was just going to say... Uh, so you had Keith Courage, Legendary Axe, and Bloody Wolf. And, uh, you know, those were the three games that Bit had was saying you know, uh, should have been on there. And just the main one I really wanted to add to that uh, is Gate of Thunder. Because, uh, again, you know, you're talking about a pack-in game. Gate of Thunder was one of the pack-in games uh, for the Turbo Duo. But it's it's also just an amazing game. And Lords of Thunder is on here. Uh, so I don't really understand, like, you know, why wouldn't you put Gate of Thunder on here? Because um, there's other CD games uh, like, like Lords of Thunder. But, uh, but they didn't, so what are you going to do about it? I mean, at some point, if it hasn't been already, uh, this thing's going to get hacked. And then you can just put whatever you want on here. So, um, you know, complaining about what is or isn't included uh, is really just sort of pointless. That was a very easy boss. Uh, this game does have really cool graphics. I'll give it that. Uh, I don't mean this version of the game, but just in general, uh, sort of the psychedelic... Uh, style, graphical style of this game uh, is pretty cool, and we're dead. Yeah, Papa John's is not good. Alright. Uh, so that's enough of Space Harrier. What else do you guys want to see? Yeah, 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 yeah. Is anybody talking to me? Do I need to answer? I don't want people to feel like they're being ignored here, but... Uh, yeah, Space Harrier 2 was a launch Genesis game. Hey, damn it. Uh, oh, Vinny says you've been, you say you've been dieting, but tonight you're getting two burgers from In-N-Out to celebrate National Burger Day. Hey, uh, I went on a diet one time and lost almost 60 pounds, and uh, I ate an In-N-Out double-double protein style almost every day uh, during that diet. So, um... Yeah, anyway, all right, I think I'm okay here. Uh, okay, 
So, a Space Harrier. I don't know. You guys want to see Splatterhouse? Uh, I don't know. Now that I said it, I guess I have to do it. Um, I'm not the world's hugest fan of the first Splatterhouse, only because, like, Splatterhouse 3 is so cool. But, um, but we'll check it out real quick. David Green is playing Tekken and eating pizza. Uh, that sounds like a, a pretty good quality uh, Thursday night to me. That's just water, by the way, in case anybody wanted to know. This game needs more blood. Um, why was I talking about Splatterhouse 3 recently? Was that, um, was that a magazine read-through or what was I doing? Uh, yeah, it was. It was a magazine read-through. Uh, that game is so amazingly, that's gotta be the bloodiest game, uh, on the Genesis, bar none. Oh, hey, TB's here. What's up, man? Um, yeah, you too. Uh, thanks a lot for the, uh, for the five bucks, man. Appreciate it. Uh, but anyway, I mean, you know, that being said, like like I said, this, this game's just not as good as the sequels, obviously, but, you know, like, if I had had this game uh, back when it came out, like, oh my gosh, I, I would have thought this, I would have thought this game was so cool. Splatterhouse would be a good Halloween costume for me. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not buff, but, um, you know, I guess I'm... Stocky is the nice way of putting it. Fat is the not nice way of putting it. But uh, but that would be cool. I guess I don't hang out with the kind of people that would really appreciate a costume like that or know what it is. So that would just make it kind of feel like a waste of time. Uh, plus, I, I couldn't even tell you the last time I put on a Halloween costume. Uh, actually, I could tell you, but I think it was over 10 years ago. What happened? Oh, I thought I was done. Damn it. Well, that's no big deal. What are these things even? Hey, get off me. Uh-oh. Alright, now we're done. Oh, I see. You get like one little extra at the end. That's like some of the bosses. Uh, in some of the Castlevania games that kind of get like that one last hit on you uh, after you've beat them. Uh, speaking uh, speaking of Castlevania, Dracula X is on here, so we can check that one out again real quick. Um, since during the last live stream, uh, I had the buttons reversed on my controller, uh, which made for an embarrassing time. How dare you. Wrench. Pick it up, nerd. Oh, there we go. Will you just throw it, probably? Yeah. That's not that helpful. Just needs way more blood. Was that math guy was asking for a Call of Duty stream? I don't know if that's a joke or something. Uh, I think the last Call of Duty that I actually played in earnest... I forgot, you have to jump over those. Was uh, Call of Duty 3 on the Xbox 360. And that was just to get the whatever point. I forgot what those points were even called. Um, 
Well, that's that's interesting uh, about the Gate of Thunder music. Um, what were achievement points, right? And it was it was it was Call of Duty Three, right? And if you beat the game, it just gave you all thousand achievement points. Remember when achievement points seemed important? Um. Well, I mean, back in like two thousand and two or something. I, when did the first Call of Duty come out? Because uh, I got that. That was when the World War II first-person shooters were like all the rage. And uh, I played the first Call of Duty. I really liked it. That and uh, Medal of Honor uh, Allied Assault uh, on the PC. I've been playing Medal of Honor since the very first one came out uh, on the PlayStation. I don't play them anymore, but... before yeah 2002 sounds about right oh I hate this level we're gonna get game over right here because uh, this this boss battle always kicks my butt You have this killer chair. But then, oh yeah, then you get the knives. And then I think the painting comes after that. stay all the way in the corner and hope that's not going to work for me. Yep, there you go. Uh, wherever I was uh, standing was the wrong spot. Is that game over? Yeah, it's game over. Alright, well that's fine with me. Um, Wolfenstein enemy terror. No, what was it? It was Return to Castle Wolfenstein uh, was the Wolfenstein game that came out back then. That I really like that game a lot too. I still have, I have that game. I got it from like Good old games or, or Steam, I don't know which. Uh, I'm not going to play East just because, you know, you got to kind of get into that. So uh, here on the TurboGrafx-16 side, you get Bonk's Revenge, but not Bonk's Adventure. But if you just switch into PC Engine mode and go over to the Core Graphics side, then you have uh, Bonk's Adventure, which seems kind of stupid uh, that they did that. But, um, but they did. Uh, there's Kadash. Does anybody want to see Kadash? Um, no, not Spear of Destiny. That one's a good game, though, too. Uh, Parasol Stars. Parasol Stars is uh, kind of like uh, Bubble Bobble. Isn't that? It's called like Parasol Stars, the story of Bubble Bobble or something like that. Uh, we'll check out some Air Zonk. That one's always a crowd favorite. Uh, Kadash is a great game. I just Kadash is more of like a sink your teeth into a kind of game. Like, I could do a whole live stream of just playing Kadash. So this is, uh, just difficulty setting. I'll just leave it in default. We're not gonna, it's not, like, we're gonna get that far in the game anyway, right? Uh, Wally, we can definitely play Parasol Stars. I think it's a it's a fun game. Uh, I'm gonna just do auto here. So this is holding down uh, the turbo button. So that's kind of not that great. I don't. Somebody I think said that turbo on this wireless controller was like uh, equivalent to I think setting number two on um, on a regular pad but you know that's the problem with having just the turbo button is that different shooters like because I mean at least for me the main reason for using turbo it, oh you jackass is for uh, shooters but some different turbo settings work better for different shooters uh, and this is just holding down 
uh, the fire button, uh, which also works. So all of the different weird weapons that you can get and um, uh, and sort of different forms that Zonk takes is, um, you know, probably defi the defining feature of this game. Uh, I, I think Air Zonk is a very cool game. I just think it's a little bit... Uh, I think people have a tendency to maybe overrate it a little bit. Um, ag again, if you caught that Next 10 video that I did... Um, Uh, you know, this was sort of voted uh, in a, a group best Turbo Graphics games list as the best horizontally scrolling shooter uh, on the system, and I don't, I don't really agree with that. Um, I, I mean, I would give the nod to R Type uh, for that. I just want to check the chat here real fast because I know I'm sort of ignoring people. Um, Keith Courage says uh, supposedly there's a way to change the rapid fire on the wireless controller. Um, yeah, I, I'm sure there is, but I just don't know how to do it. So, uh, and I, yeah, I don't know if it's, hopefully it's easy, I guess, but, uh, I still like the, um, switch is better. Uh, Bob says, I wished I grabbed a complete Kadash back when it was sub a hundred bucks. Yeah. I think I paid 25 bucks for my copy. So, uh, that was a really long time ago though. Uh. Uh, if you, you know, Kadash also did come out, uh, on the Genesis. It's not as good of a version, but, uh, part of the reason that it's not as good, part of the reason that it's not as good is the color, but, uh, somebody actually did a color restoration, uh, of that game. You can find a ROM, uh, a sort of a color, color restored version that's, I guess, makes it look more like the arcade, so, um, so that's kind of cool, um. You know, but obviously you're, you're going to need to have, like, a flash card. Uh, oh, boy. Oh, there you go. Uh, you'll need to have a flash card or something in order to play that. Uh, thanks, Derek. Thanks for stopping by, too. Oh, he's got an extra life, I think. Oh, things are going to get crazy. says press select and then hold the one or two button for five seconds this adjusts the speed of the turbo fire i mean that's cool i guess but uh certainly that doesn't mean you, you can't change it quickly on the fly so that's sort of a suboptimal solution in my opinion but um, i guess i don't really understand why they didn't go with the switches uh since the original controller uh manages to have them Uh, that's the other thing. So on top of all the weird forms that Air Zonk can take, really cool battle, uh, boss battles, uh, or at least the design of the bosses. Um, I mean, and the enemies in general. But, you know, what this game really brings to the table is a lot of uh, personality. Uh, yeah, I was saying that earlier, uh, Rose Dower. You can't play Gunboat with this controller, so... Um, This, this is a good... Um, oh, damn it, I lost it. This is That was a good weapon for this level, but now we don't have it anymore, so...
not not too much, but this, I mean, this level is kind of cool because it, it's kind of a little bit reminiscent of like a beat 'em up game, you know, with the scrolling uh, city street. Which I mean, I don't think it's on purpose reminiscent of a, of a beat 'em up game, but um, it's just kind of a cool level. And if we make it, uh, there's a junkyard later if we make it that far. Here we go. I don't, I don't know those are supposed to be like Hanafuda cards. I mean, I guess I don't know what else they would be. You know, or just little tiny Japanese flags. Very good music, too. I don't know. Hopefully you guys can hear the music all right. It's pretty loud in my ears, but... Sorry, I'm like leaning off camera. This, um... This webcam that I use, like, you can't... It doesn't have a way for you to swivel it from side to side. And now I've got a two-monitor setup in here. So, like, the the camera is at, like, an angle, and I can't really fix it, so. Oh, God. Okay, I thought we were done. I don't even really know uh, what that's supposed to be, but, oh, we died. We're very underpowered uh, for this section of the game that we're in. Uh, Ernie's asking any new additions to the wall back there. I mean, there's the skateboard back there. That's not a super new addition. Uh, it's been up there for a couple months, I guess, but... Where, I even, where, where am I? Oh, I guess I died. Alright. Uh, Alright, that's enough of air zonk. Uh, what else are we gonna check out here? Alright, Utopia 2, New Adventure Island. I mean, we gotta play a little bit of Soldier Blade, or it wouldn't be a classic gaming quarterly Turbo Graphics stream, would it? Turn it up a little bit too. What do you think about that? Corey says they didn't release this thing in Canada. Like, can you not just order it on Amazon in Canada? Like, they won't let you, or what? No, I think Classic Game Room is making videos on Amazon now, isn't he? Oh man, I feel like... I'm playing in a capture window and I feel like there's input lag. Um, you know, up to this point I've just been playing it plugged into my TV been fine, but I think maybe that plus the capture, this just feels a little bit funky. But we'll see what we can do. Speaking of classic game room, there's some guy I was just talking to on Twitter just someone that follows the show who was telling me that when he was in high school he worked there like on uh, CGR Undertow and um, it's just crazy that at one point there was enough money on YouTube that Mark could do something like that you know it really goes to show just how much less money there is on YouTube I'm not complaining I don't care but I'm just saying like you know at one point you know, he could hire people, you know, like Derek, 
uh, wasn't that that kid's name Derek, the kid with the long hair? Uh, and basically let them make their own videos on his channel and could pay them for it. Um, oh wow, he got a pretty big donation there from Henry 3PO. Heavy 3PO, sorry. Uh, thanks a lot, man. I appreciate it. I mean, that's not something I would want to do anyway, so it's not a big deal. Uh, but, you know, I don't know how many people did Mark employ at one point. There we go. All right. I was going to say... I'll be back. Hopefully you guys could hear that. He said he'll be back. Um, yeah, Smoke says, You can't believe Derek never resurfaced. I don't. He was doing something else, though, because I was following him on Twitter, and I don't know where he went, but... I don't know. I don't remember what exactly he was doing. I, maybe it was a podcast or something. But uh, if you've ever watched, you know, Bithead did a video about Kadash, and he mentioned CGR Undertow. I don't remember if that was a video that Derek did or it was somebody else. But um, like, basically, the kid couldn't get off the first level of the game, and just like trashed it in a review, and you know that that pissed Jesse off because. You know, it's a great game, but, you know, obviously the kid maybe didn't understand how to play it. Sorry, I keep, I keep popping the microphone. I moved over the, I, I was, what was that? Um. I was using a, a just a floor standing microphone stand for the last live stream, but I finally moved over like sort of the desk mount swing arm uh, microphone thingy uh, over here, but it's like too far away from me now, and so I can't really get it positioned where I want it. But, uh, I just need to adjust it, I guess. They should make a Game Boy Mini. Uh, that would actually be that would actually be really cool. It, it won't happen, but I'd buy that. I mean, I could see Nintendo making a Game Boy Mini that you plugged into your TV. because I was using the little power up thing. Right. Sorry, I just want to catch up on the um, chat. You press select twice to get bonus game. Okay. We'll try that. So double tap, double tap select when I'm selecting a, a game. Um, okay. Ernie says, how would you rank the minis? Uh, well, I'm probably going to leave something out here, but I actually, I actually answered that on Twitter the other day, uh, maybe yesterday. Um, I don't think, I mean, it's not really even an arguable point. I don't think that the Super Nintendo Mini uh, has to this point been the best one. Uh, and then second place, I mean, either the NES Mini or this one. I mean, I really don't have much of anything to complain about about this one. Uh, except, you know, you know, we can complain about the game selection, but if you don't hack your NES Mini, you can complain about that game selection as well. Um, but I think that system and this system are both really good. Although, they, does the NES Mini come with two controllers? I don't remember. Um, and, uh, you know, I guess I'll just say that the NES Mini and this, I think, are sort of in the same class. And then, like, the Genesis Mini uh, wasn't wasn't quite as good. There were some emulation problems. Uh, so I would call that sort of maybe a third-tier Mini system. 
and then you know the unfortunate PlayStation Mini would be sort of in the the fourth tier. Although apparently I gave mine away, so I don't I can't see for myself. But uh, apparently, if you hack the PlayStation Mini, you can improve the emulation on it. So, and then like I haven't messed around with things like the the ColecoVision Mini and stuff like that. Not a huge fan of this weapon, but when I'm live streaming, I like to try to change things up a little bit. And then I hate the mini boss that's coming up pretty soon. Uh, one thing you'll notice, I guess I should have mentioned this earlier, but you know, you start off the first level, you're in space, and now what's happening is like you're entering the atmosphere uh, of this planet. So you can see now we're kind of in like the high clouds, and uh, as this level goes on, uh, we're going to sort of drop lower and lower in uh, in altitude, which I just thought was kind of a cool little um, a cool little detail that it's maybe a little bit easy to miss when oh damn it. Um, you know, when you're just trying to concentrate on playing, so, damn it. Uh, so, like, now we're breaking through the clouds, and we're over the ocean, and then here you can see now we're over a city, and, uh, you know, we'll keep getting lower and lower. I think the next level, when the next level starts, when we're down basically at, like, ground level, here you can see the stupid green weapon. I, I don't like this weapon at all, but all right, extra life, we need to do that. That was a poor display, but uh, we made it happen.
going to catch up on the chat just really fast. Yeah, Heapy says this just existing makes it so good. Yeah, you know, it's funny because I remember when the um, when like the NES Mini came out, you know, people sort of, you know, fans of the TurboGrafx-16 were like wondering like, oh, will we ever get a TurboGrafx-16 Mini? And we all just figured like, oh, no way, you know. Uh, so the fact that this came out at all, I, I agree, is is pretty awesome. Um, you know, I really don't like this level, so uh, maybe it's time to move on to another game. We've played this game so many times on live streams. Yeah, Sega CD Mini would be cool, but that's... You know, I would say that's probably never going to happen, but like I just got finished saying, you know, at one point we were saying that this would never happen, and here it is, so... There we go. I really can't stand the boss at the end of this level, although... You know, as is the case with a lot of shooters, uh, the problem is you, you can get to a point where you're like, well, I like this weapon better than that weapon. But, uh, you know, to be really good at some of these shooters, you, you have to understand that uh, generally they design the game so that uh, every weapon is situationally advantageous somewhere. And so, like, in for this level... Uh, this green weapon, which is the one that I usually kind of avoid, um, is the best weapon to have, uh, at least for the boss battle. Uh, it's by far the best weapon, I would say. Oh, boy, we're in trouble. It's really hard playing this in a capture window, too. Which is funny, because, like, I have an HDMI splitter, so I could just, you know, have this going to a go into my second monitor so that I didn't have to play in the capture window. But... Alright, this is not the boss, though. This is like the mid-level uh, mini-boss. This guy's not really too much of a problem. I made my viewable window just a little bit bigger, but it helps. Alright, so we don't want to pick up those weapons because we want to hang on to this green wave weapon or whatever for the for the boss. This is not this is still not the boss, this is like the remaining carcass of the mini boss or the mid-level boss that we just killed. This is not the part of the boss that sucks. Up here. It's... Oh, oh. We 
we're in decent shape here. See, it's got, you see those radiating like green lines or something? It's like this magnetic field that is pushing your ship around. So like you have to fight that to stay away from those gigantic beams or whatever that are coming out. So there you go. But if you have the wrong weapon there, uh, then it's very difficult. This level's got some great music. Uh, Morpheus, this is Soldier Blade. Uh, and as I mentioned in that, that video that I did, uh, the next 10 video, you know, this would probably be in my top three uh, U.S. Uh, Hue card uh, games for the TurboGrafx-16. you guys can hear that music okay. Hey Jeremy, how you doing? How's it going Z-Man? That's cool. And then check out the parallax scrolling. Oh, that looks cool. It's a lot more common to see horizontal parallax scrolling. Uh, so it's pretty cool to see some vertical sometimes. Gosh. 
things chase you around the screen for a while. Sounds ominous. No music sounds really ominous. I read. Uh, remember what this guy? Oh yeah, this guy just does this. We got three lives, so... Oh! Now we have two lives. And now we don't have the weapon. And now we have one. <laughs> so this is not the weapon that you want for this guy. You want something where you can shoot backwards. Uh, like having this... Yeah, there you go. Like having this red weapon uh, fully powered up. So, uh, anyway. That was enough of that. Oh! Uh, where's the other stuff you can do? Normal game. Uh, this is kind of cool. Yeah, setup. There's this weird thing in the setup, if you've never seen it. You can actually... It, it's called, like, Arcade. I'm not going to do it, but I'll just show you. If you go right here to Screen Mode, you can change it to Arcade. And you see it It makes it narrower, so it feels like you're playing, uh, you know, a, a arcade vertically scrolling shooter. But it just takes all the graphics and, like, scrunches them down. So it actually looks really stupid. Um... I was just going to show you that there's also uh, this challenge mode, which is like a caravan mode. Um, uh, you can do two minutes or five minutes. And um, that's kind of cool. So now it's just, it's basically like how high of a score can you rack up in two minutes? So like, you know, you, you, you want to like kill everything if you can. And all these guys here. So, you know, this is the kind of thing. For some reason, these caravan modes were like really popular in Japan, but um, I guess not so much here. Because, I mean, they would release games in Japan, like the summer, uh, summer Carnival games that were like caravan shooters, but they didn't really release that kind of stuff here. But, you know, the whole idea with this is like every time you play this two minute caravan mode, it's going to be like the exact same stuff. But it was more about you trying to optimize exactly how you play through here to, you know, maximize your score. So you see, we're already past the halfway point. Brian wants to know what's the next video. Um, well, so I, mean, I talked about this last time, but I got some parts to, to I'm not going to say upgrade, but um, sort of make a modification to my arcade cabinet. And, you know, people have been kind of, oh boy, people have been kind of asking me to make a video about my arcade cabinet. So I was going to do that. Um, I don't, I even have the camera already set up to do that. I just have to kind of do it. So I'm hoping to do that, like, I'm hoping to do that maybe like this weekend or maybe even tomorrow or something. Although tomorrow is my meeting meeting gauntlet, Zoom meeting gauntlet. Uh, five seconds left. Um, and then like I said, I mean, I, I have like three, you know, three flashbacks. You know, I made that video at the beginning of the year saying I'm going to make more flashbacks this year. And I want to make them, but, you know, I just feel like I want to have some privacy when I, when I do that. So, um... CGQ tries to figure out how to program the clock on his VCR. Well, actually, I don't have the remote for my VCR, so I might not be able to program the clock. Uh, oh, Derek's taking off. All right, man. Well, thanks for uh, thanks for hanging out there, Derek. Uh, okay, so that was Soldier Blade. Uh, I'm not going to play Bomberman. There's Lords of Thunder, which um, I really wish it was Gate of Thunder instead. Um... Does my wife watch my videos? Not really. Um, which I'm fine with. Like, I don't take... I wouldn't it wouldn't bother me if she did, but it definitely doesn't bother me that she doesn't. Okay, so uh, these are the Japanese games that are on the system. Um, 
Yeah, Kung Fu. That, that, the Kung Fu is China Warrior, right? Uh, it's Necromancer game. Uh, Galaga 88, that's pretty cool. Um, that it's on there. Fan oh, let's try. Okay, so... Uh, I just I, I pushed select twice. I'm not. Get, am I supposed to get some kind of jingle or something? You look to see a reaction video of Bithead's wife watching his videos. It's funny, like, based on the little I've seen of Bithead's wife on his show, I can kind of imagine what her reaction would be. This is a game where uh, Turbo comes in very, very handy. I hate that in this game, everything wants to shoot at you, like, after it's already gotten past you. going around the other way because there's just like too much monkey business coming at me. tank on it again. I still don't really understand what that means, buddy. Um, Michael's Workshop. I'd love to see an episode of CGQ Plus where Chris gives us a loud and in-your-face version and his 4K. I mean, that's just not really my style, you know? I'm just not a loud in-your-face person. shave my head either sorry although you know Bithead just said he gave himself a buzz cut which is what I always just give myself so my wife wanted me to say hi Blair is her name hi Blair could we get another Radio Shack I think I read through all the Radio Shack catalogs I have okay here alright you're playing through the original version I know to play through the updated version from M2 in the game press Select menu, hold select while you press start. All right, let's. We're gonna try it again. Um, because I really want to check that out. In fact, let's do it right now. Okay, I just held down select and pressed the start button. Oh yeah, that is different, right? Isn't it? The music's definitely different.
I forgot which version. There's a version of this game. Is it is it Super Fantasy Zone, maybe? That uh, M2 did for the 3DS. Um, that's like... I didn't even see that guy. Uh, that's like super good. See, the ship moves too slow uh, because you can buy speed power-ups in the shop, but I never saw the shop come around. Thousand. That's nothing. All right, we'll take a big wing, and the wide beam is pretty cool. What else we got here? Oh, you can buy an extra ship. That's nice. Might as well. All right, and then you configure what you want to have. So we want the big wing, that's gonna make it a little bit faster. Uh, we'll have the wide beam, but that's a limited use weapon. And once it runs out, we go back to the standard. And then the smart bomb, because maybe we can like use that on the boss or something. See, so now you get like this wider beam, and I think it kind of helps. Now we're already out of our wide beam, so it kind of sucks. I'm not picking up the money, but... Oh boy. They just flew onto the screen there. Yeah, hey, head home, mole. If you don't cool it, you're going to be out of here. Sorry. Well, I'm not talking about politics on the show. Um, all right. Next game. Uh, oh, Dragon Spirit's on here. That's kind of cool. Have we played a Paré Gate Ball before? Uh, I feel like I played that on a live stream a long time ago. It's funny because I always thought it was like this really esoteric uh, PC Engine game. And um, so I was surprised to see it on here. I guess it was more popular than I thought. 
Apparently, gate ball is a pretty popular like sport, uh, recreational sport in Japan. So uh, maybe I shouldn't be um, surprised that it's on here. hurts um yeah I, I don't think that's really that exciting to watch on a live stream so we're not gonna play that one uh it's military madness nectaris dungeon explorer and utopia that's the first bonk uh, and then you can play the japanese version of ease book one and two if you happen to speak japanese uh super darius that's that's pretty cool to have on there um not that i'm the hugest fan of darius but um uh aaron it's just cold water sorry Can you hear that? It's like the CD spinning up. That's kind of a cool little touch there. Uh, would I like to have seen any of these consoles have internet access where you could download new games? Definitely. Definitely. Uh, I'm surprised that none of them did, to be honest. Uh, I'm really bad at Darius games, so this is not going to last long. I just figured we'd check it out. Like, I, I, I really don't like shooters where it's like, see, these guys take way too many hits to kill. And that, that's like a, it's just a pet peeve of mine. Because then I keep missing out on power-ups because of it. Because that green guy at the end of the line has a power-up. But, I mean, look, you have just like this little pea shooter. But, you know, the real, th the thing about Darius... Uh, is that if you play it in the arcade, it's like multiple screens wide. And that's really cool. And so, like, once you know that, the idea of playing it at home, um, you know, it's kind of a disappointment. So, uh, that's enough of that. Whoops. I guess it's not enough of that. Do I prefer vertical or horizontal shooters? I definitely prefer vertical shooters. Uh, Mujanga says, will there be a Streets of Rage 4 stream? Yeah, I would definitely like to do it. I just, you know, I'm trying to balance out streaming with doing other things. And so I already felt bad that um, this is like two streams in a row without like a proper upload. So, but I, I noticed that you saw, I actually had it like set up that episode 46 was going to be Streets of Rage 4. Uh, and then I just didn't do it. So, um, so we're not going to play Superstar Soldier because we already played uh, Soldier Blade. Um, but so the the mini actually can also play super graphics games. So uh, I thought it'd be cool we could check out uh, Daimak Imura is uh, uh, Ghouls and Ghosts, which. Um, some people say this is like the definitive home version of Ghouls and Ghosts. I mean, for me, I really love the Genesis version. So and I think I like that version better. I think people say that this is more, um, I guess, arcade accurate. But... You know, arcade accuracy is not, al is not always the end-all be-all. No, I don't want to be a duck. Oh boy, now we're in deep trouble. See, if you can kill that Dracula ghost, whatever the heck he is, guy, then you get the gold armor in this level sooner. But now that I don't have any armor, uh, now I'm in trouble, so... There's, let me get some right here. Oh, no, I'm not. Take that sword, though. The sword is certainly not the best weapon in the game, and uh, like in some situations, like the end boss of this level, the sword actually kind of sucks, but it's still fun to use. All right, now I should get some. Oh no! All right, well that is my favorite weapon in the game. So. Oh boy! Oh, I thought I was dead right there. Thank you. 
So, I mean, I don't know. This, I mean, this version of the game is okay, but, like, bear in mind, this is not even just a PC Engine game. This was, like, uh, you had to buy this crazy other console game, you know, or crazy other console just to play it kind of game. And, um, oh, why did I do that? And, you know, when you take that into consideration, I just feel like, you know, is this is this really that impressive a port of Ghouls and Ghosts? Uh, I'm not sure that I think so. Again? Wait, come on. No more duck, no more duck, no more duck. Come on. There we go. The sound effects are better. I'll give it that. There we go. It would have been cool if having the super armor gave you, like, an extra hit point. The gold armor. It's not... Super armor is not an official designation. See what's in here, but yeah, I don't want that. Oh, now I have to grab that, don't I? Yeah. Oh well. How many hit points does that guy have? I gotta start off at the bottom of that mountain again. This seems a little bit harder than the Genesis version. I'm not complaining or anything. I just that would have been enough hits uh, to kill that boss in the Genesis version, I believe. be like tree roots or what are those things besides creepy yeah this is definitely harder than the genesis version <sighs> all right hey jerry what's up man all right what else we got Legend of Valkyrie? I don't actually know what that is. Um, All Dines is another... This is a shooter, but this is a... a super graphics game. Uh, Spriggan. People like Spriggan. Um, how is it? It's good. I like it. This, this mini system, I would say, gets the classic gaming quarterly seal of approval for whatever that's worth. 
Oh, I didn't mention, uh, talking about the graphics modes, there's also a CRT mode to make it look more like you're playing on a CRT. Uh, I really don't like the way that looks. but Because um, it, it, uh, it puts scan lines, which is fine. I like scan lines, actually, if they're done properly. Uh, but then it also like makes it blurry, which um, that I don't like. This is a CD game, so again, you get the uh, cool music. trying to pick up any other weapons because I kind of like this one. I don't know what dictates when this other dude shows up and helps you. Like, I'm not pushing a button to make that guy come around. I, I don't... I have very little experience with this game, so. But it, it's a well regarded shooter, so. Oh my gosh. weapon either. This, I'm guessing, is the boss. That was... Oh. That was suspiciously easy, unless that wasn't the boss. Which, now I'm starting to think maybe it wasn't, because... Now things are getting creepy. Oh, maybe it was. Oops. I thought the yellow ones were for, like, points bonuses. What's this one? Uh, Craig wants to know how Lords of Thunder runs. I mean, I'm sure it runs fine. Uh, I didn't try it. I'm just not a huge Lords of Thunder fan. Maybe because I'm bad at it, but... I mean, what game am I not bad at, let's be honest. Oh, 
Well, hey, the Reasoner. I consider you a gaming historian. Yeah. I'm not the gaming historian, but uh, I try to be a gaming historian. Uh, thanks very much for the super chat. Appreciate it. Uh-oh. Pay attention. We beat him, but that cost us like three lives or something. Um, no, I don't think that's mac uh, masochism. There's plenty of games that I like that I'm not good at. I mean, I'm not good at most games, but I still like playing them. But... I think there's something about Lords of Thunder where I just don't really like the way it plays that much. I mean, it's a. I'm not trying to say it's not a good game. It's just not. It's not for me, you know. Dude, we need a better weapon. This is definitely a pretty cool game, though. It's, I mean, it's not too difficult. I'm getting pretty far in it, considering that um, this is not a game that I really have any experience with. How dare you. Oh, no. Oh, I don't like that weapon at all. This game has a lot in common with Soldier Blade, actually, uh, like as far as the way the power-up system works and whatnot. Oh, I thought I was already dead. Um, it even shares some uh, sound effects. That's pretty interesting. I can't remember who made Soldier Blade. Um, like, they're all technically Hudson games, but Hudson didn't actually develop any of the Soldier games, I don't think. At least not on the um, PC engine. Any more thoughts on a cooking show spinoff? You know, I... I always think every time I'm cooking, this is going to sound stupid, but every time I'm cooking, I always think about like, oh, what, how would I show this or what would I say if I was making a video? But I mean, it would be a lot of fun for sure. Uh, what are my thoughts on Streets of Rage 4? I like it. It's just really hard. Like so far, I've been playing Streets of Rage 4 on easy, which makes me feel like a wuss, but. I feel like it's a game where maybe you got to play it on easy for a while and kind of learn it. You know, it, it's not... It's got a lot of differences between, you know, Streets of Rage 2 and, uh, and it. Uh, have I played Sylphia? I think I... Yeah, I think I've played Sylphia, but maybe not enough um, to have an opinion. And then, yeah, E-Tank, I was kind of picking up on that. Your weapon shot type is based on the combination of colored orbs. Um, yeah. He just had a properly prepare a Swanson TV dinner. Let me get do better than that. Um, oh, isn't Gradius one of the games that you get like an arcade version with? Was it Gradius or Life Force or maybe both? Uh, no, Sylphia is not on here. Oh, yeah. 
I think this is the arcade version. You're not gonna make me. Okay, good. Do I have my own chocolate chip cookie recipe? I mean, I have a chocolate chip cookie recipe that I use, but I did not. Like, I didn't develop the recipe myself. It is a good recipe. Alright, that's not bad. Where's Bithead? That's what I'd like to know. Oh, there's some bad slowdown, baby. Boy, the sound effect for the lasers on this arcade version is really terrible. Thanks, Craig. I think talking about music like that would be kind of out of my wheelhouse. Oh, rhythm games? Yeah, man, I don't really play rhythm games that much, so... That's how I play Gradius. One one death and we're done. That was a good run, too. Yeah, the noise of that laser is terrible. It sounds way better in the home version.
Uh, well, we played Gradius, we might as well play some Salamander, but again, I'm gonna try to play the arcade version if it's here. The arcade version is cool because it's got some speech. Radbuster says, just wanted to say thanks for your Genesis launch video. I've watched it so many times. Thanks, Matt. I appreciate that. You know, that's that's definitely one of my favorite videos that uh, that I ever did. Did you ever watch the original one? Because the one that's up now is like a remake. The original Genesis launch video is the first um, is the first launch video I ever made, and it was really bad. So uh, I made a new one, uh, and then I like delisted. Like the original one is still on YouTube. But it's like delisted. Yeah, this is the arcade version. You can hear the speech. It's funny because I feel like, you know, in like the mid 80s, maybe there were all these arcade games where the speech all sounded like the same. Which I'm not saying that in a bad way. It's just I find it interesting, is all. Um, like the speech in this game reminds me of the speech in the arcade version of Punch Out. I would shut this game off too, but it's all right. We're gonna die soon anyway. Yeah, Craig, I mean, it's something to think about, you know. That would make for a cool... I guess what I'm saying, like, that would make for a cool video. I'm just not sure that I'm the best person to make that video. Oh, man, this guy's moving a lot faster than he does. Oh, on the Nintendo. Oh, my gosh. That was rough. Yeah. Sorry, whole head mole. I know you want to speak your truth, but this is not the place to do it. So in the arcade, if you want to use the missiles, you have to hit the other button. Get chat while I'm playing. I wonder, I don't, I haven't really, oh man, I haven't spent much of any time, well I want to do it right now actually. I'm just curious uh, how the home PC Engine version of this game compares to the NES version. Oh, 
this is still more like the arcade. You know, on the NES, the, the power-up system uh, worked more like um, Gradius. Well, I'm not going to make you guys watch the whole first level of uh, Salamander again, so... What else we got? Oh, you guys want to check out uh, Ninja Gaiden? Uh, thanks, Jerry, man. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, let's check out Ninja Gaiden and then Star Proger would be cool to check out, too. And then we got Spriggan Mark II. Spriggan or Spriggan, whatever you guys like. Uh, Gradius II is also an awesome game. Uh, and then, of course, there is uh, Rondo of Blood. Uh, and then over here uh, is Sapphire. I'm not going to play Sapphire because I'm horrible at that game. We played that on the last live stream. And um, I was really terrible at it. So uh, I'm curious to check out this uh, PC Engine version of uh, Ninja Gaiden. Am I crazy? I feel like the NES version of this game plays a little bit better. I think I like the NES version of this game a little bit better. I mean, this looks a little bit better. I'll give it that. Although the sprites are smaller, aren't they? Ninja Gaiden. Uh, you guys want to see Star Proger? We haven't played Star Proger before, I don't think. Have, oh, no, we did on the last live stream, but um, I don't think we ever played... See, it's putting the Super System card in. Uh, I don't think we ever got to play as, um, as a PC engine. DB wants to see Cho and Niki. All right. Well, let's play a little bit of this. your power-ups are little hue cards. So, Star Proger is, um, uh, as I said on the last stream, is supposed to be like a parody of the Soldier series. So, depend and depending on which, um, on which character you choose to be, the power-ups look different. So you, there's one uh, character you can pick that looks like a spaceship, and then the power-ups look more like the power-ups from, uh, not from Soldier Blade, but I think from like uh, Superstar Soldier. Let's 
see. I, I don't understand what these weapons are supposed to be, but one of the weapons you can get are CDs, and that looks pretty cool. You know, that's the same uh, one-up jingle you get from uh, Soldier Blade. CDs are actually a pretty good weapon. So, I mean, kind of the main problem, I think, for me, at least with this game, and maybe it's just when you play as a PC engine, I don't really know, but... Uh, I think it really takes a while for this game to, like, get difficult. So... Like, I was playing it the other night, and I was really thinking, like, I might, I might, like, beat this game on, like, one life, because I just kept playing it and playing it and not dying it. I'm uh, not dying. And then I got to, like, the fifth level, I think it was. And then, like, all of a sudden, the difficulty, like, ramps way up. So, not a very good, um sort of linear uh, difficulty progression. Which, I mean, I guess that makes it cool if you're somebody that, you know, says that you're not good at shooters, then um, this might be a good game uh, for you to at least kind of get your feet wet. Maybe we'll play to the end of this level or something, and then um, uh, somebody said they want, and DB said he wants to see Cho and Niki. Oh, by the way, do you see the little, um, those little protective shields? Oh man, as I'm trying to point them out, they're little PC engine controllers. Yeah, Night Court. Night Court's an awesome show. All right, that's enough of this game. Like I said, I can keep playing this game forever. All right, which way was it? Oh yeah, all right. Chill, Nikki. Um, can you make a launch of the ColecoVision video? Um, to be honest, I'll probably never get to making a launch of the ColecoVision uh, video. It just, nobody would, not literally nobody, but it, this, people don't seem to be interested in consoles that came out before the NES on YouTube. So it's just, um, but I mean, I don't know. A history of the ColecoVision would be a cool video. I'm not going to lie. Also, do you want to go to Disneyland? Um, thank you, but not really. 
Um, I think I've been to Disneyland since I was like 14. I mean, not that I would mind going, but... You know why I don't want to go to Disneyland anymore? Is because they changed the Pirates of the Caribbean. That was my favorite ride at Disneyland, was Pirates of the Caribbean. This game has some very... I don't, I don't believe I've played this game before. This game's got some interesting music. You gonna die or what? People in cages flying by. selected a different player. Oh well. This game means poopy game? I would think that that Toilet Kids game uh, would be like poopy game. If you guys have never checked out Toilet Kids, uh, unfortunately, Toilet Kids did not come on the TurboGrafx-16 Mini, but um, you can watch a YouTube video of it, or... Uh, what is that? Or fire it up in an emulator. stay here until I have to move. Oh, no. oh. oh. Was I doing any damage even? Or do you have to like hit it down here or something? I don't know. I don't know about this game. Fight. Good artwork, I agree. Alright, what else did we say we were gonna play? There's a star pro here. I said I didn't want to play that. I'm not really a bottom man fan. I'm gonna go back this way, that's one. Alright, what do you think? We'll do one more game. You guys want to play a little bit of Dracula X? We can. But whatever we play is gonna be the last game, because it's almost 10 o'clock here. Hello to forearm tattoo dude's wife, Taylor. All right, nobody's got anything. I'm gonna start Dracula. All right. Well, I think we have to sit through the intro though, which doesn't bother me, but. Turn it up. Oh, by the way, you can hear this. This system has some audio buzzing. In der guten alten Zeit lebten die Menschen noch ruhig und in Frieden. Niemand glaubte, dass es in Zukunft zu einer Bedrohung kommt. And you notice this is still the original voiceover instead of the redone one they did for the PSP, which I hate. Auf der Schattenseite des Friedens und des Wachstums. Und gibt es aber auch immer it, won't, das Böse. it won't let you Die skip beginnen, it, das Wachstum unless you have a game save. Und bezeichnen den Frieden als Degeneration. Wir haben uns hier versammelt, um die Mächte der Finsternis mit unserem verfluchten Blut zu rufen. Wir wollen, dass sie die Welt regieren. Wir erwarten lächelnd. Den Niedergang der Welt. I 
love that. Nach 100 Jahren ist der Böse wieder auferstanden. Er kann sich in eine Fledermaus, einen Wolf und Nebel verwandeln. Er liebt die Nacht. Er schlürft das Blut von jungen Frauen und lebt ewig. Der Burgherr des Teufelschlosses, der Herr des Bösen, Graf Dracula, ist auferstanden. That for me is like the best intro. To Turn that back down. Uh, that's like the best intro for any game ever, in my opinion. Main entry. Hello. Oh, sorry. I mean, I wouldn't even call uh, Dracula X a port. I don't really know what that game is. Yeah, that door creaking noise is is uh, is absolutely awful. All right, come on. I don't want to see this. Whoops. No. Sorry. It's funny because sometimes if I'm playing like the real version of Dracula X, if I want to skip a cutscene, I'll just start like hammering all the buttons. But if you have like a, a real CD system, if you hit start and select at the same time, it resets the system. So uh, that can be a real bummer. Yeah. This is yeah. way better than Symphony yeah. of the Night. I agree. I really liked Symphony of the Night when it came out. Like that was a really, really cool game. The problem is, is it like now that's just how Castlevania games are all going to be. And at this point, I mean, there have been more Castlevania games in the style of Symphony of the Night than there have been on sort of this this older this older style, which which I like better. And that, at least for me, is what is too bad. Like, I wish they would make another Castlevania game like this. See, why is that guy speaking Japanese? If the other guys were the other guy was speaking German. I mean when when Symphony of the Night came out, I, I had a great time playing through it. I think I played through it on um it was like spring break when I was in college and I, I sat on the couch for like a week. Uh, just playing through that game, and, and I really had a great time, but After a while, I think I just kind of got tired of the format, you know, if that makes sense Because then I played through I think all three games on the Game Boy and I had fun with those too But then like the DS comes out and they come out with like three more games That are you know sort of these Metroidvania games as people call them and uh, It just got to me. It got a little bit old Yeah, I mean, Super Castlevania 4 is a really good game, I think. I mean, it's different, but uh, in some way, I wouldn't say it's my favorite Castlevania game, but I really like it a lot. And it might actually have my favorite music uh, of any Castlevania game. Come on, throw it. Oh, you suck. Uh, 
Uh, like one of the things that's cool about this game is all the branching paths. Uh, I mean, like right here, you know, last time when we played this game, when I had my, the buttons uh, backwards, we kind of went through this, this, I don't know, can you call this a secret? I mean, you can go through here and then, you know, you just go a different way temporarily. But the thing is, if you go through this door right here, I really love the way uh, this level looks. Also, I hate you. You have a different end boss if you go that other way. And uh, for those of you that tuned into the last live stream, uh, you know how badly that that boss kicked my butt. Although part of that was because, like I said, I had the buttons backwards. But I also kind of forgot uh, the best technique for beating that guy. Plus, I mean, these guys look awesome, and if you go the other way, you don't get to see them. So I gotta, uh, did you play Bloodstained Curse of the Moon? I did a little bit. Um, I want to play it more. Um, we actually haven't even built it yet, but we just bought a new uh, like TV stand for the TV in the living room that I think is going to have... There'll be room for me to put my PS4 up there. Um, so maybe I'll, I'll have a comfortable place to play more modern games. But part of the problem right now is I don't have a place to easily set up my PS4 just because of the way our living room is configured, if that makes sense. So it's kind of down here, but... I mean, this desk is fine, and this chair is, you know, comfortable, but it's maybe not the best place to want to sit for a long time and play a game. You gotta be careful because this guy will grab you. Get out of here. Oh, don't grab me. No, he almost got me. Couple more hits. There we go. See, that's like 10 times easier, I would say, than the boss you have to face if you go the other way. funny it was like 105 103 today and then tomorrow it's going to be like 82 or something oh, damn it. i hate these crows so you try to you have them barely on the screen on the right and then you can hit them with one of those axes Like that. Hopefully we'll see. Hopefully we can get Maria. Because I think that was something else I screwed up. Uh, on the last live stream. Does your family... Well, the only family I have is my wife, and um, we don't really play uh, games together very much, unfortunately. Oh, hey, Josh is here. What's up, man? Where have you been? I might like to know. The main thing that sucks about getting Maria is you have to give up your special weapon uh, in order to carry that key.
All right, Josh, I'll, I'll let it slide then. That's a, that's a good excuse. All right. Agree, Craig. Here we go, we're gonna get Maria. Time for our cutscene. I think the only thing out of that I understood was that I heard him say Vampire Hunter. Um, yeah, Craig, I mean, yeah, I, w I mean, I would do that. I mean, not now, but... Um, Um, because that's the kind of thing I could turn into like a weekend trip with my wife or something. <clears throat> oh, smoke monsters flexing is good weather. Well, actually, I should take that because right now I have nothing. So I suppose that what I was saying is that, you know, basically we have no special weapon now to fight this boss because like the axe would have been very helpful. The the holy water against this boss, in my opinion, uh, doesn't really work that well. So This boss is really not that difficult, actually, with the standard weapon, but... Oh, I didn't see that one up there. Is that anything cool? Oh, damn it. Well, hopefully there's nothing good up there. 
Got to. Nope. All right. All right. Well, we made that one with the skin of our butts, but we did it. So. Yeah, I always forget about item crash. I hate those flea men. Who doesn't?
Uh, I probably like Adventure Island better than um, Wonder Boy, I would say. But I like them both. I think that new Adventure Island is definitely one of the better games on the Turbo Graphics. I forgot. Oh, this guy takes your weapon. Damn it. So right there, like, that guy jumps back and forth a lot and tries to take your weapon, which he did. Uh, if you manage to kill him, this is another spot where you can go a different direction because you can stand here and then hit those rocks and then it'll suck you up into the ceiling. So instead we have to go this way. Uh, no smoke because I don't have any interest in going to Comic-Con either, to be honest with you. So then now we have no... Sp oh, okay, we just got the cross. That's not a bad special weapon to have, I guess. Although I can't remember who the... Oh, yeah, the boss here is like that. I don't even know what you call that kind of creature. This guy's kind of a pain. Yeah, Dragnet, man, with Tom Hanks and Dan Aykroyd. Then we gotta kinda wrap things up. I see people are starting to kinda wander out the door anyway, but uh this stream's been going on for a while. Old Smokey's hanging out. Hanging in there like a champ. It's just like this is a, a uh example of where like the game gives you a, a special weapon that's really kind of useless against this boss. I think that's sort of like your punishment for dying, really. Oh, crap. 
This guy does a little finishing move on you. All right, anyway, we got him. What are your thoughts on Cobra Kai? I haven't actually watched Cobra Kai, which I want to. I don't have a, I don't have anything against it. I just haven't gotten around to watching it yet. I just feel like the axe is kind of the best special weapon in the game. Like, I feel like it's the most versatile, if that makes sense. Sit down. Sorry, what's going on? Someone's talking about magazine? Sorry, I don't want to miss that. Oh, sorry. Can we send old game magazines to you? I mean, you can, but to be honest, like, if, um... If you have magazines that I want, I'm happy to buy them. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to turn down donations just because, I mean, I know people like to do that, and I like to do it too, but just, you know, just to be clear, um... Uh, I'm happy to pay for that kind of stuff. Or we're gonna die. Oh, all right. I'm not gonna die. I figured that was gonna be a one-hit death kind of situation. Oh, well, I was just standing there. Um, yeah, it would be cool to do a next generation uh, magazine read through. I don't. Th I'm not sure. I don't know what copies I have of Next Generation. Not many. But you know, if you guys run across them, like I said, you know, uh, I'm happy to pay for that kind of stuff. So, like, I won't. I won't say who, I don't know if he's even still in the chat, but somebody just scored a bunch of magazines for next to nothing in a comic book shop and left behind all the issues of Next Generation because he doesn't like that magazine. I was like, I, I would have paid for those, but he's actually going to send me a bunch of his doubles, so uh, which I offered to buy. But. Last life? No, we yeah, got one more.
There's also wall meat directly to the right of the spike. Drop trap thingies in the wall to your left as soon as you drop. So I don't know where you're talking about. Maybe I'm too late. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Um, all right, well, I don't think I've ever even gone this way, so let's tr check it out. If I can not die right here. You saying right here? Oh, yeah, great. Thanks, man, we needed that. dead here. I'm not sure how much I'm enjoying this way. the option of at least going the other way. That's one thing I don't like is when you touch the door, you, you automatically go through it and you can't go back. Ah, I'm not a fan of those eyeball things either. Have I ever beaten this game? I don't think so. Okay, now we got game over. Um, I think I've made it to the last level, but I don't think I've beaten it. Oh, might as well save my game, right? Alright, well, it's 10.30. I'm getting pretty tired. Um, I think that was like a three-hour stream, uh, so that's pretty good. I'm not hungry. I'm just tired. And I'm hot. It's kind of stuffy down here, to be honest. 
Um, but anyway, so that's the TurboGrafx-16 Mini. Um, I forgot what do these sell for. I want to say it was 99 bucks. So, uh, you know, I'm not going to bother giving my, you know, I always say, you know, if you're going to pay that much, you know, there's the mister out there. But, you know, I know that's not for everybody, and that's totally understandable. And plus, this is kind of a cool collectible thing to have. Um, you know, again, I'm just I'm surprised this ever even came out, uh, but I'm glad that it did. So, um, you know, as to whether or not you should get one, I, you know, I could see these being rare uh, down the line, considering that they're like sort of mail order only because you have to get them on Amazon. Um, you know, I would say that only time will tell what the collectability of these mini systems are. But, you know, as soon as the NES mini and then SNES mini disappear from store shelves, the price skyrockets. But I mean, that's Nintendo and this is NEC. So, um, so who knows? But, um, but yeah, you know, um, thanks to everybody, uh, who came and hung out tonight. We had a pretty good crowd tonight and, uh, and that's cool. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's all I got for today, I guess. So, um. Thanks so much for hanging out, and uh, we'll see you guys again soon. Hopefully with a flashback, or if not that, uh, the uh, episode about the arcade machine back there. So, um, so yeah, you guys all take care, and have a good weekend, and uh, I'll see you again very soon. Good night.